Unity hates indie games. This is because of John, who is the president and CEO of Unity Software. And on September 6th, John sold 2,000 shares of the company. By some odd chance, you haven't heard of the Unity controversy, which occurred on September 12th, 2023. Unity Software announced a runtime fee, which shook the online gaming community. So let's go ahead and look at the old pricing fee versus the new pricing fee. Recently, Unity Software has backtracked a lot of their statements and they have reversed the old pricing fee into a new pricing fee with new requirements. We're going to take a look at it, but first let's look at what started this uproar within the community, the old pricing fee. To summarize the old pricing fee, before a game is charged with these new fees, it must meet a specific revenue and download threshold that changes based on which tier of Unity subscription a developer pays for. At the time when they came out with this first version of the pricing fee, Fee. This did not matter if you had the Unity Personal, Unity Plus, Unity Pro, or Enterprise license. And this is where this obviously became an issue for the overall community. People were not happy. And this was due to the fees being broken down depending on where the game is purchased. So a game brought in the US, the UK, and other markets is assessed a higher fee than when it's bought in emerging markets like India or China. The problem with this old system it's clear that in the future with this old pricing fee there could be bad actors people purposely trying to bankrupt indie studios this is a very long post from uni i'm pretty much only going to look at one section of their post that pretty much helps our case here the most important information here is the information that is bolded they pretty much did all the work for us who is impacted by this price increase more than 90 percent of our customers will not be affected by this change and this is obviously wrong it's so wrong that they got hit with a community guideline and this community guideline literally says that unity states that only 10 percent of their customers will be affected making it sound less bad than it is as of the gaming report 2022 unity had 230,000 developers that's around 23,000 developers affected by this change Lots of studios have posted statements about moving engines and just overall talking trash about this new announcement from Unity. Now let's go ahead and discuss the new pricing fee. As I previously stated, Unity has now backtracked their first announcement of this old pricing fee. So if you do meet all three requirements for this new pricing fee, you now have a choice. You have a choice to either take the 2.5 revenue share or the calculated amount based on the number of people engaging with your game each month. With the old fee you didn't have a choice and then also with this new pricing fee you will always be billed the lesser amount now that we've talked about the old pricing fee and the new pricing fee i'd like to ask a question to all of you gamers what is the future of open source game engines i feel like with the unity controversy with a lot that's been going on with engines in general the fact that unity already had problems when it merged with iron sourced a lot of developers and studios that was a red flag to a lot of people people in the community. And this question is something that keeps ringing in my head. What is the future of open source game engines? Let's start a discussion. I'd love you guys to answer this question as well. Get down below in the comment section and let's start a discussion. To answer this question, I'm going to use Bracky's tweet. I think Bracky's post about the whole Unity controversy pretty much summarizes and answers this question very, very good for us. I'm going to leave the link down below to Bracky's post, the first link in the description. But it goes something like this. Luckily, there are other ways of structuring the development of software. Instead of a company owning and controlling software with a private code base, software can be open source with a public code base that anyone can contribute to and publicly own. Blender, a stable 3D modeling software in the game development community, is free and open source. In fact, some of the largest and most advanced software in the world is built on top of open source technology like Linux. So just like Bracky said, open source software is the future. It has already transformed the tech industry, but in the future, there is still a ton of work that needs to be done. And what's really interesting about open software is someone like me or you that is watching has the ability to contribute to open source software. And that's it for today's video. I'll catch you gamers next time. Peace out.